So I will um, I will call us to order at 6.33, the February 23rd, 2021 uh, ORCA uh, board meeting is uh, officially up and running. And our first item of business is public comment. Um, seeing none, I will move right to the approval of the minutes of December 15th, uh, 2020. Um, and if people do have their virtual board packets and you could take a look at this uh, um, type up of minutes that Carlos so graciously put together for us dated the 15th of December, 2020. We could just take a few minutes and take a look at it and um, come back and see if we need to make any changes to accurately reflect that last meeting. Um, we'll go quiet for a few. Hey, CJ. Hey, good to see you guys. Hey, CJ. Hi, CJ. Hey, y'all. Did you just come in when we were, we are right now looking at the uh, December 15th minutes. Okay. Um, that is the item we're on presently. Thank you, Mike. It's in your board packet and we're just taking that minute or three to take a look at it. Outstanding. I'm going to go uh, audio only, but I can go back to video if you need me to. Sure thing. I've found an item or two, but um, will you we, tell me we, right now? I can start correcting. Um, yeah, there's a at the bottom of page one. It says legislator, and I believe it should be legislature, capital L U R E. Let me see. Bottom of page one. Um, I have it in in. Um, in a different program, so it's a little bit different. Under what section? It's under the director's <clears throat> report. Director's report. Okay, let me see. All right. Yep, I think the second sentence. Yep, that's the spot. Okay. Um, the other thing is, um, actually, it's under the low power FM presentation where it has my name all in favor to create. Uh -huh, yes. Yeah, so I can't make a motion. So I believe John, Mr. Block made that motion and got it. Did CJ second? Did Dave second? I don't know. But, um, but you I think I formulated the, the question. Master. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you, yeah, you formulated the question, you redacted the question, and then somebody, and I think it was John. Yeah, J John definitely moved it. I don't, I, I don't recall the second. I think I was the second on it. That sounds great, CJ. I'll loan it. <laughs> oh, it's a great idea, anyhow. Um, those were my. It was two. a great motion. Anyone yes, found is. anything else for fixins? Um. What about for discussion? You mean, 
on actual um, on the content items that are brought up at this meeting. Yeah, because it seems like there's stuff that was proposed um, and that it should have some follow up. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, for now, we're just approving the minutes that this actually happened and this accu accurately reflects it. You can yeah. hold that for old business. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Rob does have a little fill-in story about the uh, the state of that very subcommittee, so. Yep, yeah, good. Um, and, any, and any other just sort of uh, technical fixes and we'll put loose ends under old business. Okay. Good. If I can entertain a motion to accept these minutes if no one is seeing further amendments necessary. I would move to, to approve the minutes as um, amended. Sue has moved to approve the December 15th minutes. Is there a second? I get, I will. Thank you, Carlos. Um, so so Rob, I will, as soon as I, um, tonight, Rob, I, when I send you the new minutes, I'll send you the uh, the corrected old ones also so you have. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. It's moved and seconded to approve the uh, December 15, 2020 minutes. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed would be a nay. All right, that's unanimous. Uh, acceptance of the December 15th minutes, which will move us to, um, Rob has tucked in uh, before the financial reports, the Comcast contract. So Rob, I'm assuming you're taking the lead there. I will, but um, I just saw that Mike Doyle called in. So I just want to get Jim helping her get on, helping him get in on this meeting. So if I could just take a brief moment. Sure, he, he called to the actual studio. Yep, so I'm just going to check in with Jen. I'll be right back. And, and we'll try to get Mike in on this, on this call. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, and I'll actually, um, and we probably can pick it up further in uh, new uh, old business, but Sue, um, Rob got a call from John early in the new year um, saying he wasn't um, feeling as well as he was. I don't think it's an alarming situation, yeah. but um, <clears throat> he just was indicating a little bit of a back off and uh -huh. um, so he was the one um, to take the lead on that subcommittee for the low power FM. Yeah. So that create, created a little limbo there. Okay. And then there's also the Chris Wiersma's ideas about uh, camp, summer camps. Yep, yep. And Rob will have an update on that as well. Okay. Rob, I just- Mike, was that John Block? that you were saying was not feeling as well as he was? Yeah, yeah, I think so. yeah. it was just, Rob, I used the time um, where you were gone to just catch people up on why that subcommittee didn't happen on low power FM. And was that, was that accurate? John was just called in the new year and- That's go, correct. Yeah. He, he just spoke with me. He said he's having <laughs> some trouble, trouble focusing. So he wanted to back out. I didn't know if it was just the committee or the full board appointment. Okay, the only other, this would be for new business, but the other place where his coverage was um, important to us potentially is the broadband hmm. liaison coverage. So can we put that under, I don't know whether it be old or new, but. Yeah, probably probably we'll park everything under old business that um, that represents okay. loose ends on this last board meeting. Okay, would, would so um, Mike, is that now on your list for old? Yes, those two items will will pop right up. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yep. All right. Um, so that will roll us into the financial reports. And uh, your success getting Mike to join us is. Yeah, not not has not succeeded. <laughs> My success is not successful. OK. Yeah. So Mike, you know, he, he doesn't really want to use Zoom. So he did say that he's available if you want to call him in and, and get a call. Um, I'm not sure how I would. Oh, do it in the Zoom if you department. could let him know that he doesn't have to use Zoom, he can dial in just like a I conference call. Yeah, I did. Let oh, him. and he still didn't want to. Yeah, okay. so he's so he's kind of begged off. I I did have a good conversation with him today. He was excited to hear from me. He sounds in good spirits. I know that he's still fighting the the cancer. 
Um, mm -hmm. But he was excited to hear about it. He wanted to know how things were going. Uh, so I was uh, hoping he could get in so he could get updated. But he, he certainly seems in good spirits. But um, And I will uh, work with him. The one thing I talked to him about was that a few months ago, we had approved uh, an additional $1,000 a month to pay off the loan that we had made to ourselves uh, in 2018, which did not get facilitated. So I asked him how that would happen. He suggested that I call Ed Jones. And if there's a problem, since I'm not a signer on Ed Jones, if, there's a, if they have an objection to me, he suggested that they do know who I am and that would be board business. Um, but if there was any problem, then he have Ed Jones just verify with him. So I was going to move forward with that and maybe even go back a few months and just sort of, he was even suggesting we might pay the, the thing off now. But the, the, the board action that we approved a number of months ago was that increasing the, the payments from $1,000 a month to $2,000. Accelerate it, yep. And if You're I got, saying that didn't happen. It did not happen. So Is there any have, reason not to pay it off? Are we worried about our credit rating? No, in fact, I think the, the, the reason was that Mike was advocating for not to do that. But at this point, there's so little left in, in payment in principle that yeah. he, he seemed to be on board with just paying the entire thing off. So we could. What is left? Looking at the, at the financial report, it seemed like we had doubled our um, assets in the last five years, over the course of five years. So yeah, so the, the five years ago, I think was when we actually withdrew the sixty-five thousand for the for the for the purchase of this of the system. So that was a drop. So if you look at you know six years, you'll see that the number goes back up by sixty. But we've certainly made up the money since then, you know, and, and done, done quite well. I was surprised to see how much it increased in the last month. I think it's almost twenty thousand dollars in one month. So whatever Mike invested in has been doing really well. So Mike has seen this and had no asterisks to add to the figures that are in front of us. Mike has, has not, well, I would say he has not said, seen this because he doesn't check. He said he doesn't check his email, but once a month. So he probably is not. So, okay. But as I was looking at, it, I see that the, the numbers are going up pretty, pretty ex extensively. And you're looking at the Edward Jones. Um, yep. Piece. I'm trying to see if there's a, Balance of the loan looks to be about just over twelve thousand dollars. Got it. So you know, if we, I'd have to look back, but I'd say it's been at least six months. So you know, if we backdated and said six grand of that we've already appropriated, there'd be only six thousand dollars left. So if if you guys want to, we could just make a motion to pay off the loan now in its entirety, and we certainly have money that we got in the prior year in 2020 from the COVID relief. Uh, so financially, we're looking fairly well and maybe we should go through the financial st um, statement just to show you that. I can give you a balance right now that um, of the three accounts that we have, the the one that's a tied to the PayPal is now at 94.54, Carlos? Yep, I'm right, got it. Up by almost $50 and that was because mm -hmm. of a, a donation we got at the end of, of 2020 from Kendrick Kite. Who donated fifty dollars to Orca? Oh, nice! Uh, yeah, nice. It was very nice, and I sent him a nice thank you, and, uh, and obviously a, a statement so that he could use it for tax purposes. The checking account currently holds fifteen thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and fifty cents. I'll repeat 15, that. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand three three eighteen and fifty cents. Got it. And then the savings account, which just got replenished because we got the fourth quarter check from Comcast. We now sit with $202,287.85. And I'll say it again, Carlos, $202,287.85. Okay. So we're, it. it would, I don't see any difficulty with paying that back right now. I don't know if that would cut into my capital for this year, but if we need it, if we got we hurt, we could always pull from the reserve fund if we needed to. I guess at your pleasure, how you want to proceed. So that would be entertaining a motion to retire this debt of about $12,000 in one fell swoop.
I'm in favor of that. Does that become a motion? <laughs> Sounds like it's becoming one. I, I move that we retire this $12,000 debt. And we're looking for a second. I'll second for purposes of discussion, CJ. CJ is seconded. Um, a discussion on this 12 grand. Having a little bit of debt tends to be good for your credit rating. What's the uh, interest rate again? I think we were at 5%, but I don't know if it actually applies to our credit history because we're, we're loaning ourselves. Oh, right. Okay. So it's, not, this, a, it's not anybody that's reporting the credit to anybody. This is paid off at a grand a month. Yeah. So it would it would be done next next January. January or so. Well, so I mean we didn't do the 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 up payment in 2020. So I'm imagining it's about six grand that didn't get done with that. So we could apply that and just say, all right, there's six grand that should have gone to it in 2020. So then there's only six left for this year. Or we could say it didn't get done, Rob, so now we're just dealing with 2021. I see what you're saying. That motion from the fall where we accelerated the rate of pay down. So retiring the debt now would actually mop up that confusion. We're in some weird limbo with a prior motion, correct? Yeah. Um, any further discussion on um, the motion to retire this um, the remainder of this debt sounds like our acceleration plan did not go through as planned, but um, I, I will add that the original reason they making the loan to ourselves was to keep money in the in the funds in the in the, in the investment funds because it was making more money than we were paying in interest. That it right our 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 dividends our our um, the, would outpace the interest rate. And I think Mike was proved right on that. We did make, you know, it's, as we've seen in the investment, it's, it's, it's been going up pretty, pretty, at a pretty good rate. In that case, that would argue to, uh, if these are long-term, that would argue to leave it there because it's hard to get good rates of return for safe investments in an era where the interest rates are like 1.8%. I think prime is 1.24. The only, yeah, Something the only crazy difference like now, CJ, is that at that point, we were talking about $60,000 as opposed to, 12,000 or, or 6,000. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's true. We're not going to make a lot on 12. Okay. I mean, either way, really, because if we're paying 1,000 a month, it'll be done in a year. If we pay it off now, we're not losing that much in, uh, in dividends. So, Right. And we're about what, three months in where we said we'd, be, we'd like to pay it off at two grand a month, but that didn't happen. I'm trying to go back over the minutes now to find out when we actually made that motion. Come back to August now. Not August. August is five months back, so that's that would have been another 10 grand paid off already. Well, we paid the one down. Oh, we paid the one, sorry, right. So that would be five. So there'd only be seven left as of August, but it looks like you're going back even further, huh? Yeah. And now back to April. Hmm. Well, then the, it's really diminishing then. Wow, did we get all the way back to February?
Well, that would be a full year would be the 12 grand right there, wouldn't it? Yeah, which I seem, I seem to remember thinking that we would be done with it by the end of the year. So it makes sense, but I'm not seeing it. A quick a review doesn't show me it. But you guys have a recollection of doing this, right? I'm not thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'll call the question and, and we may just, this may be the way to mop up this confusion. All right, um, all those in favor of uh, retiring uh, this uh, $12,000 debt that we tried to accelerate paying down um, and it just I didn't happen. Um, all those in favor of retiring this debt at about 12 grand left, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? All right, so that, that solves whatever, whatever that was. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, that's been, um, I don't know when we took that loan out, but it's been. Um, it, was, it was five years ago. It was five, okay. All right, um, anything else in the financials you wanna highlight, Rob, before you move to your executive director's report? No, just to answer any questions you might have, as I said, um, the, the, the report that I submitted, the uh, budget versus actual was for last year for 2020. We're still working on finishing up some numbers. I've got to get the, the compensation numbers that the accounting people to deal the thing where they take the, the ASCII account and put it in the proper areas of, of personnel. Um, but, you know, there's just a couple of cleanup things that we have to do before we start getting ready to file the 2020 tax. But if you guys see anything in there that you wanted to ask, but we're in good shape. How is our uh, relationship with MFA? VCFA? The college. Yeah. Quiet. Our landlord, we're, we're, our landlord's happy with us. Yeah. It's amazing to me that I keep in mind that it's been a year since we moved here. We actually, the, the lease says an increase in rent next month. So I have to remember to put the new amount up in there, but it's, um, it's been quiet. There's, you know, there aren't students here. The the facilities guys come through. They're they're always very responsive to our. You know, we've been asking them questions about the uh, circulation of the air with COVID questions. Um, they've been wonderful. It's been a very a very positive move. I think up here, and we're saving money too as well. Do we share the the plowing fee when the snows come? They cover that. We don't have any bill. We don't have any good electricity bill or cleaning bill. Rob, have you figured signage out with that's, them? No. Nope. So that's, I, you know, I know that the, the, when we put the mailbox on the building, they said you can't really, we had to sort of hide it from the street because if anybody, so I imagine they don't want anything on the building, but I was going to propose that with some kind of post in the front that might have us and maybe other people that are in the building so that we could get some signage that's not going to affect their historic building. Was uh, So I'll... Could we have a little tiny sign that says something like Orca parking with an arrow? Something like that. We know we're, I mean, we don't have any designated parking for us, although we we're supposed to get one spot, which has not been designated yet. Uh, parking doesn't seem to be an issue around here. It, it may be as we come out of the pandemic. Um, I was thinking of it more as a direction for somebody trying to find the office. Yep. So, yeah, we want to try to look at placements so that people can find us. That's, that's a key element. We do have stuff in our windows so that people can see, um, you know, but th yeah, Mike, at some point we have the discussion, particularly as, as soon as the snow gets out, I'm imagining, can we put some kind of post, posted sign into the ground that doesn't interfere with the building? And then I think when you were trying to get Mike Doyle on, Sue was asking, and I'm also would love to get just a little of the, um, uh, the summer camp, just how that's getting fleshed out. Yep, so I was gonna do that in my executive director report if you wanna to move to that. Oh, I'm sorry, we're still in the financials. Yep. I apologize. Yep. yep. So I don't know if anybody else has any questions on the financials or we can move on to the, the report, my report. Um, I didn't catch the savings, the last number. I was looking for that number, I couldn't find it. The savings account is 202,287 mm -hmm. and 85 cents. 85 cents? Yep. 
Okay. Got it. All right. Let me open up my ED report. Uh, just on a note on staff evaluation, evaluations, we are getting to the end of them. Uh, it's been a, a great conversation with Jen. She's been responsive. She's feed, feeding me back. And we just want to finalize it and get the final plan actions out and get it signed. So we're scheduled to do that. Zach was even easier. Zach didn't really have much feedback. But we'll have that in place. We're still contemplating how do we get feedback or conversations with the, the part-time people. So we'll move to that. Um, Rob, when you have the full-time staff completed and signed, could you just get them to me? And that'll trigger me to call Dave and Carlos to start your evaluation process. Yep, that was on my plan. So as soon as they're done, they're going to you. Great. Okay. We did get some uh, purchase equipment on last year's capital budget at the end. We looked at how much we had left. We did get a new JVC camera, which has the ability to stream directly. Uh, some audio recorders, Zoom controllers. And we were very excited about the OWL Meeting Pro camera that we now purchased. We have uh, uh, that, which is a 360 camera. We're trying to figure out how we use it. Uh, for one thing, I mean, it's really a video conferencing camera so that it has the 360 at the beginning, top of it, and then the, it will choose whoever's speaking. So it's really made, made to sit in the middle of a table and being able to pick and move to the particular person who's talking. So we've done, done some uh, work with it. I actually showed it with the, the state because they were talking about it via IT solution. Uh, and we, um, I think one of the ways we would be using it is when we get back into a room together, that would be one way to record the meeting. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, but in, at the state house, those small rooms, like the very tiny ones, the ones that, where they don't want camera operators, you know, just putting that thing in the middle before a meeting starts. Yep. Uh, it should be able to capture that meeting without interfering, correct? Yeah. Oh, Carlos, that's such a good point. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a thousand dollar camera and we don't, I don't know if we want to put one in each room, but there are, you know, we look for opportunities, what kind of meetings, not just the state house, but also municipal meetings, school board meetings that are, you know, are, that will have an opportunity to be able to use this. And then the output of it is Correct. USB, so we need a, a, some way to be able to record it with through the USB interface. So, so you can you record? Um, can you dump it into maybe a recorder that you buy from you know from? As long as um, bringing in USB, it has some sort of com computer capacity. To, you know, it's got to some have some sort of operating system that will. It only pumps out. It's only the output is USB. That's it. And how about does it capture online also? Do you have that that possibility of capturing somewhere else? It well, so it's it's uh, it utilizes the streaming software, so you can connect Zoom to it and you say, you know, much as another USB camera, you would just mm -hmm. say, use this as a camera source. Yep. So and it works with QuickTime. So that was the way to record it that wasn't using a streaming soft platform. It doesn't pull in uh, additional footage from other places. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. really designed to be the camera that sits on the, on the, on the mm -hmm. tool and is to be able to do the 360 and pull to the person who's talking. Okay, yep. but as long as there's a good uh, wireless network there, then we could capture multiple streams simultaneously using connecting by connecting each of them to Zoom. Is that right? Uh, uh, Van, is that one in each room? What's that? One in each room, for example. Like yep. if you put one of these in each of the committee rooms, then you could potentially capture all the committee meetings, which would be really nice because then we don't have to choose. Right. I don't know if we want to lay out that much money. I'm inclined to think that they might argue be. that we would. Okay. Um, it, it's going to reduce operator expenses. It would. Um, okay. So I think it might offset and it dramatically increases our coverage in a way that well, the only be thing really beneficial. Su suggesting is that the state might be able to contribute as well. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. And and I think you know I think I think it's just I, I mean I remember seeing those small rooms. It's it's terrible for a camera operator to be. It's intrusive, and I get it. You know, and if those small rooms we could just have that thing only. I mean, you know, senators used to they always used to get angry <laughs> because the you know, operator was like in a corner there with all his gear, and it was impossible. And I think you know if we have something like this that doesn't take up space that way, I, I think that would be a great option if we could have it at least you know 
a few, at least for a few rooms, maybe for two or three at least. I would yeah, say let's try to do them all, Carlos, because having spent a lot of time in there trying to get broadband legislation passed um, and and other legislation, you know, you know, it's like, it's interesting, like in order to get a particular piece of legislation passed, you typically need to get into two or three or four committees in order to get the aggregate support that when it gets to the floor of the house and the Senate, it just gets approved. And you never know which committee it's gonna be. So if we could get, I mean, this is why I'm suggesting that we, if yeah. you need a motion, I would be willing to bring a motion to I get mean, this equipment And I think acquired. If, we're, if we're going down this road and we're gonna to talk to the um, government about this, now is the time because <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of COVID funds that, could, that will definitely justify this. Mm -hmm. come out of so just to be clear these the, the owl camera does not is not networked so you need a device another device that would feeds it to the out to the internet or to the whatever device you're correct using. right and you're still yeah. working out just how to use this thing properly yep um, but there has been interest in the state i mean we we demonstrated it for the the puc uh and i think there is real potential for it in the state house as well as because it overcomes the logistics of those committee rooms. So, so I'm sure. And what is the additional device we need to connect to in order <clears throat> to be able so we to do? It would be a, a laptop, but, you know. But if there's something else that could translate the USB into something, I don't know what that yeah. device is. It's some research, but uh, you know, it might be. A, I, 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 it has to be a, a computer, I think, some sort of process. There's, no, there's, there's also the Teradex, the small Teradex ones. They have. They have protocols that are small that record and get pumped out to the internet also. Yeah, and the Teradek, but I think takes an HDMI. So I think, and I know that there are devices that switch the USB to HDMI. I mean, we use one to go the other direction to get our cameras in, into the computers, but I would imagine that there's a, a comparable device that goes the other way. Correct. Yeah, and that's a little bit of investigation. And I, you know, and I think also maybe we should investigate later on, look into an owl that has everything embedded inside of it. You know, maybe another company is doing the same technology that has creates the internet protocol, has everything in it, and yep. um, records and everything. Yep. So I think CJ just uh, it warrants a little bit more thought and investigation before we get to talks with the state house. Or the, or the mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to just try it out a little bit and work out some of the kinks yeah. and stuff. And who's who's got the who's who's moving forward on this? I can. Let Do you see. want? Carlos and I to jump in harness with you? Sure. Or are you good? I think I mean, I guess, I'm good, but I mean, Carlos, I know gets pretty excited about it. So he may just come anyway. I, do. So, I yeah. mean, we could talk about this. Let's talk about this this week. Then I'll just okay. look into it also this week. And then we could just have a, um, a I mean, I guess I'd say, CJ, I feel comfortable, but I'm, not, I'm certainly open to anything if you want, if you want to participate or ask any questions. I'm just wondering, it. yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind roping me in, yeah. I'm not yeah. particularly useful. What I've been doing is reviewing RTMP. Because yep. uh, I was familiar with it, but then I thought it had gone away because so many browsers were blocking it, and and uh, and now I'm looking at the you know the, the underlying bandwidth limitations of it because I I want to come back to it. I'll I'll take this offline, but you'll you guys on the board you'll see an email from me regarding the fact that I do think we want to designate sites because we want to be sure we have the underlying bandwidth to handle. The, the streaming of the video. Okay. Because you're using RTMP encoding, right? Yep. Yep. So you still need you still need enough underlying yes. bandwidth to be able to, and that's the part where I was like, huh. So I really, it, and you'll explain to me why I'm off base, I'm sure, because it, it sounds like there's some weird thing about cable versus internet, which I don't get. Okay. Um, but yeah, so back to the cell thing. Yeah, I'm excited and I'd love to be roped in Partly to help and partly to learn. All right. The next thing um, I have for my, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I was just, I was going to prompt you. Maybe you were getting ready to say it on the uh, the whole radio situation. You met with some people, sort of yeah. in lieu of a subcommittee meeting that John was going to pull together. Yep. And that ties us back to our approval of the December fifteenth minutes. So I, I have on my report just Van's report, video camp, and then low power FM. You want to go in that order? Is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So the legislative report uh, that you know um, CJ got to look at, you guys have, uh, is beginning a lot of press. 
if you, if you don't feel like reading it, there was a good concise sort of uh, uh, overview of it that was uh, Jane Lindholm did with Vermont Edition on VPR. Um, so that's worth it to listen. Lauren Glenn did a good thing. I think that, you know, I like the fact that they um, really did talk about uh, how essential the, the, um, the peg stations are. I think initially when we were discussing going to the legislature with these ideas, you know, like 10 years ago, the worry and concern was that the legislator would say, wait, this is funds that we can pull back into general fund. Uh, I, I think we, I, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable about that, that they will see this as a, uh, that the peg stations are so ingrained into our communities and so essential for the participation participation in our in our in our uh, government and our school boards and our communities that I don't think they're going to touch it. In fact, Peter uh, really does stress the the work that we've been doing, and I think the COVID pandemic has certainly shed a light on that. If people have re relied on local access stations to get access to their local government. And state government. Um, the the recommendations that he makes, you know. Um, are, are, I think the one he's sort of really recommending is this idea of a tax to uh, poll attachments. So um, that's what he's sort of putting, although he does talk about a sort of a hybrid about, you know, he looked at uh, tax and streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. Um, he looked at uh, universal service fund and increasing that to have some peg money. He talked about capital money. Uh, that's an area, I mean, he does really talk about the, the the area of negotiation that's available to the access centers directly to Comcast is in that capital funding uh, rate. Uh, so the 5% is capped for operating, but we can negotiate additional capital. Capital. They typically stand at a half percent for capital. Uh, the last contract we did, we negotiated them up to 0.9%, which has been nice. Um, Burlington, for example, has three AMOs. They each get a half a percent. So if you combine them all, for that service area, they're getting 1.5. Um, so he, he suggested that you know there might be an ability to, to renegotiate that even together to get an increase in that, which may be managed by van. There were van members who were a little wary of that because that would mean that they would be their capital budget would then go to van and then van would distribute based on need. Although there's some argument for that, the smaller access centers, say the Hardwick and Windsor are operating on a few grand in capital expenditures a year. So when they get to like the need to buy a new server at $60,000, they, they can't even really begin to contemplate. So there might be some argument that, that this might be a way to go, but it's just a proposal, an idea that he floated. Um, I think that's kind of the high points that I got out of it on my initial reading of it, but you guys can certainly take a look at it if you have any questions. It's a discussion that's gonna be continuing during the legislative session uh, and within the band community, bands um, contemplating uh, a, 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 web, a video conference for the band membership to be able to go through our talking points and what we see in the report. Uh, so that should be happening maybe the end of next week or the beginning of the week after or sometime in the week after. So as soon as that's scheduled, I can get that to you. So you guys might would be able to participate if you're interested. But I think in overall, we're very happy with the report. There was, uh, he was, he was asked by the legislature to look at um, managing efficiencies. Is there an opportunity to sort of streamline? And he really said that Van's already sort of doing that in that our work that, you know, the obvious example was the statewide template contract was work that was done, was done by Van so that the, the, the access center didn't have to go with a loan. Um, so shared uh, resources, advocacy were all areas that Van's already been doing. Uh, he did talk about mergers uh, he didn't see really any benefit to forcing mergers, uh, but you know there are some examples of people merging. For instance, in Burlington, uh, VCAM and RETN are now merging and becoming the media factory. Uh, there could be some efficiencies, but he felt that that being self-driven by the access centers themselves was was an okay way to go at it. Um, I think that's the high points that I, I would say with that. So I don't know. Rob, did the statewide channel come into play at all? Other than an example of shared resources, so, you know, that was one another example of, of shared But resources. not how to fund it or anything. Other questions on um, that legislative report to the legislature, I should say. I, I'll also add that it's being looked at nationally. You know, I'm, I chair the ACM Northeast Board. 
Massachusetts, Maine are very interested in it because they're doing their own legislative bill work and trying to get a, um, funding, uh, maybe taxing the streaming services. And I know that nationally, the ACM was very happy to see it and was uh, appreciative of the work that Vermont's done. So we're getting national recognition in the access community about the work that, it, that this report has done. So, and it really does come from the work that band members have done with Action Circle, which is the, the uh, advocacy group that we've been working. Amy Schellenberg has been wonderful. Band's been contracting her for now two years and it's been, it's shown fruition. Along with the lines, the COVID relief funds that we got last year was through that work. And this report is through that work. And uh, Amy and obviously the uh, Lauren Glenn has been uh, outstanding in her work in, in shepherding this through. So um, I can't, I can only express my appreciation for the work that they do. Moving on. Yeah. All right, the video camp, Christopher and I have been talking and we're moving forward with this idea that we get uh, late summer se weekend sessions, uh, two groups of 10 kids each. Uh, he has already talked to some video or some camps that uh, people that he works with well up in um, like the Twinfield area, uh, Marshfield, Callis, and how does this work? So I said, you know, what are we looking for budget? And he came up with about just under seven grand. And I said, you know, we can work to try to make that back in the in the in the fees for the, the kids, uh, but I'm not looking at this as a money maker for Orca. It's just an opportunity to create content creators to, to uh, shepherd in good feelings in the Vermont uh, community and the local community. So uh, I said I think we can pull it within the budget that was already been approved by the, the board. Uh, he wants. I said I'd like to keep it within Orca, so, so you would be uh, an Orca employee. You know, um, and so we're still kind of working out whether that be a 1099 or a WQ format uh, with him, with the work that he's doing. He's got some promotional materials that he's already sort of uh, put together, uh, the website. So uh, we're pretty excited about it and it would be on the weekend. So they would have access to rooms here at uh, the college to convene. Uh, like I said, two sessions of 10. So Saturday and Sunday, with two different sessions. Uh, he's, um, you know, we did talk about the fee being progressive based on need. I also stressed the fact that I would like uh, diversity and inclusive attempts to get the kids who are, you know, not all, you know, some different aspects of, of that. So I, I, it's been favorable and I think, uh, uh, you know, we're moving forward with it. And that's the report. What, what age range? So the, the you know, the, that, that middle school into early high school, you know, that you, you know, in work that I've done in the past, that the upperclassmen in, in, in uh, high school tend to already be on a path and not being paid attention. So I think we get that that 12 to 15 or 16 age. Do we need special in, uh, insurance? That is a good question. I will look into that. Yes. Insurance implication. Mm -hmm. What did you say in terms of sessions? So week four weekends in August, Four hour sessions like two split between two days so like saturday morning and then saturday afternoon would be a different group of kids sunday morning saturday, sunday afternoon and this would be co-ed yes absolutely so we got insurance we're still working out some of the logistics with his his um, i think as, as far as publicity i think um as um, publicity should start pretty soon at some yep. point, you know, in about a month or two from now. And I think taking it to the social studies teachers in the middle school is a great place also to start also. Okay. So social studies and what? Social studies, I think, you know, social studies, history and English uh, teachers, but mostly the social studies teachers, I think. And we also ex expect that there may be some programs already that are around us that, you know, there might yep. be audio video I mean you may have people in your class Carlos who mm -hmm. so there are teachers that are already sort of teaching kids yep. media so we yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well the high school used to have a program like a class um U32 not the not U32 yes. used to have a program yep um it was a it was a very short class you know, I think like a one period class for students, maybe they're still doing that and maybe contacting that teacher would be a great idea also. So I actually have a, a young woman, a freshman at U32 that I've been mentoring for four hours every two weeks. Uh, 
Amy, and so I, and she's been talking about U32. There's just another kid, Colby, I think, who's been who's a little bit upper class. So he he's been teaching her. So I have a connection to U32 already there with the teachers. So okay. I think between Christopher's and my connection, we'll be able to populate the, the 20 kids we're looking for. We might want to talk to somebody like Wendy Freundlich, Wendy Freundlich about uh, already having a connection of with uh, kids in school that have a mentor. And the mentor could be somebody that actually helps them bridge the gap to what we're trying to do with Christopher. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the FM conversation. So uh, as we already mentioned earlier, John backed out of that. So, you know, I, in order to keep it going, I asked Lou, said maybe we should meet after the holidays and bring in Chris Bruin from WGDR. And she also brought in Kate Protagonist, who was very involved with Prometheus Radio, which is a, an organization, I think, out of Philly uh, 10 years ago that was trying to bring about the last time these, these licenses were available. So Kate's very knowledgeable. In fact, you know, I think she pointed out the fact that we had had a conversation 10, 12 years ago about this. Uh, and she's also been very involved with the, the WBTV, which is the low power FM station that was, um, that's at the media factory in, in Burlington. So that's all, there's already a template in place. So we said, it's great to have Kate there. It's great to have Chris there. I mean, Chris, you know, obviously one of our biggest concerns was like, we don't want to uh, infringe on WTDR's uh, mission and work. So, you know, we wanted, is, can this coexist within WGDR? And so Chris is entirely on board and very appreciative of the fact and wants to help and support. So we spent about an hour on a Friday afternoon on the call, the four of us uh, talking about the conversations that we'd already have. So it was an introduction. It wasn't really substantive. It was just an opportunity to say, this is what the conversations that we have. I, you know, basically the three of them are radio people. I'm a community media. I've not really done radio. But they understood about the licensing going through it in front of the FCC, um, some of the particulars around uh, how you the application for a license. So they're very very knowledgeable and willing to help. And they were tapping. I guess one of the topics was the the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, uh, and this has had to do with GDR lost the funding from CPD because they weren't able. They have to match funds up to three hundred thousand, which I don't think GDR has been able to do which means they lost their funding. So now the only people that get CPB uh, funding in Vermont is Vermont, Vermont BPR. Um, so it was just that the wealth of knowledge from these people uh, was appreciated and, and helped me understand what we're looking at. It's, a, it's gonna be a years long process and we decide to go forward with it. Um, so I, I you know that's the update on that. I, you know, I think, I don't think that there was anything other than that we basically just had the introductions and recap of the conversations that we each had between each other. So, is Kate's last name really uh, her last name, or is that a nom de plume? You know, I wondered that myself when I looked up well, what's Kate's last name, and I'm like, it really is protagonist. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, I, it's I, really I, remarkable. <laughs> she sounds like my kind of person. <laughs> She was, it, it was, she was a, a, it was good to meet her and have a conversation. I know that we've met years before, but she, she was a, um, a wealth of knowledge. And the fact that, I mean, I've known pre, from, about Prometheus Radio and what they were doing in the early 2000s and stuff. So um, she, they both, all three of them just knew it backwards and forward. You know, they're both uh, Lou and Kate were very involved in WBTV in Burlington and Chris is obviously the manager of WGR. So. I think next steps, reconvene, maybe we, I think um, looking at, is there a, a, a want for this in the community? How do we talk to the communities about, is there an interest in this? And uh, we move forward with that. I mean, unless there's any objections from the board. No, I'm, I'm excited about that connection. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's it from my report. The only thing I would add, I know there was a question on insurance that last board meeting about directors and officers. I have a call in Stephanie, uh, but uh, I haven't received the response yet. So it's still on my list. I'm talking about DNO, uh, about the aggregate number for equipment. And now I've added uh, insurance for the camp on, onto my list. So I, I don't have any answer for you today, but it is on my list to make sure I get back to that for you. 
That's we, my report. We we could entertain a motion to accept the executive director's report. So, um, moved. I, so I'm so, just a second. Um, oh, go ahead, I'm Carlos. Sorry. Um, we did we didn't approve the financial reports, did we? Are we going to do them together? Because let's, I mean, we let's did good approve. catch. Good catch. Um, we could we could we could move to accept both in a bundle. Yep. Correct. CJ, uh, you want to amend your uh, so moving? So extent. amended. Uh, a second to accept both the financials and the executive director's report, which got a little blurred together with Rob being the presenter for all. I'll second it. And Dave has second. Uh, all those in favor of accepting both the financial and the executive director's report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed yep. is a nay. I do have one question though, which is a little out of order because we should have discussed, but Rob, you're going to renew your call to the insurance people, but now you have a couple of topics instead of just the DNO. Is that right? That's correct. Got it. Thanks. All those opposed, nay. All right. That's a unanimous acceptance of both reports. Thank you, Rob. Now the old business pieces, um, the executive director's report may have hit them in terms of those loose ends. Um, other than John Block covering the um, fiber. The broadband, thank you. The yep, fiber piece. Yep. And the reason I mention it is that um, there's enough going on. EC Fiber is now over 52 million in debt. All that money is going, or it's unknown how much of it, pres presumably it's all going out of the Vermont local economy unless it's being held by, the debt's being held by local Vermonters like people on the board. <laughs> Um, but it's being held up, EC Fiber in particular, is now being held up as the model for the state. And so I think it would be a real service to cover that meeting and those meetings and see uh, what's happening there. You know, I think it's an important community service to do that. I have a conflict in that I'm also a board member, so I probably cannot. It's too bad because I'm there anyways. But if it's just a matter of if it's a matter of something that's not a conflict, I'm happy to do it. So I, I just a reminder, I had reached out to her, who I don't think is the chair any longer. I don't it's now that. FX Flynn. Okay. Uh, so uh, Irv was misinformed and thought that Montpelier, that we wouldn't be interested because none of the towns are in our service area when I reminded him that some of the towns are in our service area. I think he was kind of using it as an excuse. So I don't know if there's a, an appetite for uh, Orca to capture it, but uh, yeah, I know that the uh, Central Vermont Fiber, we have been covering their meetings, they've been remote, so there's just an easy to add it into our list of meetings to, to capture as they're happening. We would just need to get uh, the link. And I, you know, I don't know so, that, I don't know that yeah. they deny it to us. You know, I didn't really wanna play hard. No, they can't because they're a municipality. So here's the argument. One of the greatest expenditures, I think, I mean, anybody know what the state budget is? Five billion. Off the top of my head, no. Something no. a billion. How much is it? I, I don't five, know. I thought it was five billion. Oh yeah, if we take um, healthcare out of it, what is it? I don't know. What's where? Where are you going, CJ? Um, I'm going with that. That strategically, one of the biggest uh, uh, checks to Vermont's economic health is broadband. And one of the greatest expenditures and, and revenue sources is going to be broadband. So I think it's just kind of a public interest um, topic. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think we need to make the case. Do, we, do you know when they meet again? Or do you have access to their calendar? Yep, and it's public knowledge because they're a municipality. So. You know, having a municipality say, no, we don't want you in our meetings is a little bit of a red flag. So I, I, I guess I would say, you know. It's I the second Tuesday at seven, I want to say seven o'clock or 7.30, hang on. So March, the second week of March. Is that the board you're on, CJ? Yeah, it's one of them, yeah, yep. So, so you could recuse yourself if there was a conflict, couldn't you? Yes, yeah. I'm not sure I would love to have you be there and and represent our interests 
and recuse yourself if you perceive a, a conflict and we'll try to find someone to replace you. In, that in might the discussion work because the, we have other, oh yeah, we do have alternate delegates for Randolph, um, Jerry Ward, we're, myself. We're, we're not talking about advocating a specific ORCA agenda at EC Fiber. We're just talking about capturing their meetings, correct? Having someone to be there correct. that understands what's going on. Well, yeah, CJ can act, I mean, she is there. I, you know, and she can inform this board. I don't know if there needs to be a conflict if she's just informing us. Yeah. Pictures. And right. I'm happy to be at all. I mean, this is a topic of such importance that if somebody can throw me the calendars for the other um, meetings, especially given that they're Zoom, uh, and, and educate me, I'm happy to. Well, certainly the prior you know, meetings are available at orcamedia.net if you wanted to watch any of the prior Central Vermont Fiber ones. Yep. How yes, are we covering those? It's captured, you know, as, as the template has been for the last year, we just captured the Zoom meetings here on a computer, record them, and then trim them and, and brand them and ship them and put them on the channel and on, on. So all you need me to do is then just attend with a computer instead of my cell phone? Not even. Or you, all, all we need to do is tell my staff that here's the link, uh, and I don't know what platform they're using for their meetings. We're pretty used to Zoom. Any, yeah, so Zoom, Zoom prior one. So I, you know, I would probably begin by talking to the chair and saying, you know, we want to cover these, and can we have the link sent to us? And, There's and high interest. We already cover cent Central Vermont, and you know, you you I guess you are asking just to be polite, but it's not even really an ask. Yeah, and, um, I, and then to just run it through staff so CJ isn't in potentially. A, yeah, so it's say we add to the list of meetings and staff gets so add to the add to the Google our Orca calendar. Here's the Zoom information. Just like any other meeting we do. Dedicate a computer to it, just like any other meeting we do. Yep. So uh, if you could just, I think, CJ, if you could just um, give me the email of the new chair. Sure. Yep. I'll do it now. Yeah. And ECFGov is still the governing board mailing list. Yep. Okay. Um, Great. Any other? Thanks, CJ. Deal? Yeah, no worries. This is... All right, and is it all right if I just read it out loud into the meeting since I've got it right here? The email? Yeah. Yep. FX Flynn is Foxtrot X-Ray Foxtrot, Lima, India, November, November at gmail.com. Okay. Can I just ask, you know FX, do you think he'd be more receptive than Irv was? I'm afraid not, which is part of the reason I think the coverage is so important. Okay. But what I will do is, um, is uh, you know, whatever ORCA needs. Um, well, I ask, it, it, uh, since you're attending meetings, are there any other members of the public that generally attend? Oh, yes. Uh, so it, these are public meetings. Yep. And any member of the public may attend. Um, the governing board now is up to something like a hundred people. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or I mean, up, I, it's, it's, it's able to be up to that size. Yeah. It may be up to 70 or 80. You know, I'll phrase the email saying, as a courtesy, we're letting you know that we're going to plan, we plan on attending these and getting them onto the channel and on, onto the web. Mm -hmm. so, that would be the second, the second Tuesday looks like it would be March 9th. Yeah. The next time they meet. Yep. Yep. All right. Any other yep. old business? So um, as, as far as old business goes, um, I know we talked about low power FM band, right? And there was a mm -hmm. subcommittee, but um, um, that subcommittee, since John Block is not, are we, are we going to have a new subcommittee? And what's the next steps for that? What does that subcommittee need to do? I understood the information. Were I understood they were to meet once before this meeting and mm -hmm. um, present findings. Correct. Correct. So that, that sounded like a one shot deal to me. And I don't know if Rob's meeting with um, Lou and Chris is in lieu of that, or if in fact that subcommittee, which would, was it Dave? Dave's in CJ. Dave, CJ, and John were that. Yep. So I guess I would leave it to Dave and CJ to 
determine whether a meeting, I mean, Rob, you laid out next steps um, when discussing low power FM and that really came down to community needs assessment. Is that where we? I think, yeah, it's um, understanding the, the timeline for the application for the license and as well as some work on determining uh, community need or our community wants. I'd be glad to come in, Rob, and just uh, shortly meet with you and then sort of carry the ball to Chris Gruen and, and Kate. I already talked to Joseph Gaines today also. Okay. Super. Um, and I'm happy to be roped in if you just text me. Okay. Um, I'll dial in or be available. Would that work for you guys? Yeah. Let me t talk to Lou about what, you know, when and what, what they imagine are next steps. And then... Uh, offer to bring in you guys. Okay, Dave, that's great. Yeah, and Dave, you know the lay of the GDR land well, so that's a thank you for stepping up there. I'm just really thrilled that we're keeping GDR. I was really worried that the the uh, faulty uh, record of the college's money was going to leave the, the station uh, unable to go ahead. So yeah, it looks like they've landed on their feet, huh? Yeah, it does look that way. They had a good fundraiser. They're serious about it, and they're going to and they're raising funds, and uh, they're they're excited about. I think their application is lying before the uh, the um, the committee. You know the the, the federal f committee yes. for approval. Uh huh. Excellent. And they're waiting to hear on it. That's a big relief. Um, any other old business? I will just add that I'm looking at what we would call the call letters for our new station if we did it. And I came up with WORM for W on in River Media. <laughs> <laughs> the worm turns. I, I love it. It's awesome. I told Joseph Gaines that since he was raising all the, a lot of the money, we could just call it WGAI, <laughs> hmm. which are the first three letters of his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I love the worm, so, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think worm's great. It, 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 there's some wonderfulness to worm, but there's, a, there's also a little bit of, uh, it's like the word Trump. You know, the, people can get too carried away with it at some point. We'll see. Love it. I think as, as the worm turns, though, would be sort of perfect. It would be like our... <laughs> You know, as the worm, it would be like our sign off more, more as the worm turns or welcome to as the worm turns. Uh, I think you should, RM. you should be our Say Jerry again? Maguire, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Savannah, Tennessee already has WORM. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's Savannah. Can we have ours in Vermont? I don't know how that works. I'll ask the guys. Yeah, I think okay. once it's claimed, it's claimed. Mm, okay. Um, VT. <laughs> perhaps there's new business. I have one. I, I had an idea that I'd like to float. You first. Um, I was thinking that. Uh, do you uh, first of all, Rob? Do you know? Does MFA have a spring break? I don't know. They have a residency I was thinking, model, and I and they're doing remote residencies. So yeah, none of the students are here. This, this semester and then when they do they just do residencies for a couple weeks and then they're gone well my idea won't work until we've lifted all the bans on uh having gatherings but i'd like i'd love to have an open house as soon as we could do that yeah absolutely that's you know i you know in looking at may for the annual meeting that would be the place but you know are we going to be free enough to do it then or do we push it off late, yeah late summer? I, you know i'm hearing that but i'd like to just have set enough money aside to buy refreshments or something and yeah, then and then call it if we can whether it's the actual annual meeting or whether it's uh, yeah. even sooner if they lift things uh, or later whenever it's it's convenient to do it yeah, absolutely, Dave. We're, we're, we're chomping on the bit to, to have this all lifted so we can have everybody up. All right, good. That's, that's my only new business. And use that green. CJ, you had a new business? 
Yeah, just one thing. And if this is not appropriate, please tell me to take it elsewhere. Um, for a different organization, we've been, this is a content question. Uh, we've now done 43 um, Zoom meetings of generally, of, of generally large numbers of pilots uh, on a number of topics related to safety and operations. Um, they're of a particular type of airplane in theory, but they're of general interest. Is that content that would be appropriate? It would be all about how to own and operate a small piston airplane. These are covers. These are pre-existing videos. Yes, but we're creating a new one every Thursday. So, for example, the one that's happening this coming, the one that happened last Thursday was on surviving a catastrophic engine failure. Like 777? <laughs> a little bit. Denver. Like, Well, in this case, it was a young army captain and his engine, and this is a rare, rare event, but his engine, uh, the, a, connect, a, a, a connecting rod uh, failed and stuck a, and, and basically took a, put a hole right through his case. And he, had covered, he ended up with a, trying to fly an airplane with oil all over the windscreen and an engine that was completely stopped. And he managed oh. to do an emergency landing in a field, um, told us that he called his wife and said he wasn't going to be there to pick her and their daughter up. And then his wife called their, his parents and was like, uh, Jim had a crash. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, this if, coming if week. You're, yeah. if, you're, if you're interested in sponsoring that sh as a show, then it's, it's done. The question of appropriateness is, you know, we're public access. Yeah, that's uh -huh. I think it's very appropriate given that the first 777 that had the motor fire before the 48 hours had passed, another one also had a motor failure, the same kind of plane. And so people are now getting to the point where they, they don't know whether they want to have the restrictions lifted so they can fly to see the people they haven't been able to be with or whether they don't, that planes aren't safe enough to take them there. You know, we could expand this. Um, ours happen to be Thursday nights, every Thursday at, uh, you know, people come in for hangar flying, as they say, at 7 and then 7.30. We could, we could create for the public things to answer that. I mean, one of the guys that's in, in these meetings semi-regularly happens to be a senior trainer for Southwest Airlines, which flies. Uh, that's the Boeing 737 MAX 8 that it you're could thinking be, about, right? It could be car talk for, uh, for passengers of planes. Yeah, this would kind be of passengers. Show. This is owner operators, but we could create one for for passengers. Okay. Yeah, I think nope, there's a that. market. I for have four it and a half million miles as a passenger of aluminum torture tubes as well as a pilot. So wow, I can talk on either topic with equal ignorance. Well, well if we have to produce it, then it's it's fine. You know, it's a, it's of general interest. Yeah. And, and what do we do with all the old content? Problem. Oh, sorry, say again. Even if it's a niche in interest, it's welcome. There's, and you're also reminding me, CJ, you had an idea to produce a show about um, seniors and COVID isolation. Yep. And there was- Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a, Rob, we have a, a, someone comes to Orca with an idea, right? Yeah. And that turns into a show because we have a pre-existing process. Yeah. Right? So CJ, it's just a it's just a matter of you know board members just as welcome as as any member of the public to okay. access public access. Um, okay. Well, so I talked to the senior to the board. I don't okay. think that's it. And I, but I I like doing shows. I encourage everyone to get their stuff okay. on the TV and um, yeah, please follow through on any great ideas you have. There, okay. there are uh, there are a few um, requirements, and and I think Rob has the list of things that you have to comply in order to be able to put that show online on air. Like for example, the music you have to own the music, or has to be um, um you have to have own the copyright or copyright free music and other thing and things like that. But those are just te little technical issues which we could provide the list of things that you need to have in order to yeah. comply. Just, just, I realize this isn't appropriate board meeting. So just real quick, who do I no, no, it's okay, coordinate it's okay. with? Yeah. Okay, thanks you guys. Carlos, yeah. should you and I talk about how to move this content over? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, it's, this is the company that I'm doing this with. Uh, it's a consortium, but the other company who, who I head, it's a, it's a registered 501c3. So 
if uh, we you can... send me if you send me a demo of one of the videos that you have and I'll, I'll watch and then we, we do we can start our conversation there sure i'll send you a link to the library that sounds um, great yep that sounds okay great. do that thanks and then we'll take all right it from and there. then all right sounds good and then um would you be my contact point on the on the uh seniors in long-term care facilities in the era of covid yeah absolutely yes cool all right then you and i will just uh move forward. Yeah, it sounds good. I think the Vermont Council on Aging would help. That one might need a grant, but let's talk more offline. Okay, I'll pitch you an email right now. Um, I think that's it. Any other new business? All right, I will call us to adjournment at 824. Mm -hmm. Just a quick question. Is there anything in tonight's discussions that we don't want on the air a uh, contract negotiation or anything like that oh good one we didn't get into personnel no nope. i don't think we said anything that i wouldn't be happy to be fully transparent about okay i think dave's right but it but rob really really good question yep i i i, I can't think of anything so I'll, we'll just go ahead with what we got i okay. think if there's anything sensitive we'd need to go into executive session the only reason i thought of it was because contracts are typically one of the things you would go into executive session for yeah and i'm not sure if there's anything that. That, we that we want don't want comcast to know about i don't no. think we got into any details no i mean you get you could you, you could i mean you could edit that part out of the video right just download it and... would that be prudent to do that you guys think just take out no, the put it as executive move it and then move it you know to executive session yeah um, it would be prudent because it's 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 consistent with appropriateness. I think that Bravo was a good call. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to take out the contract part of it out of the out of the video. Yep. Okay. You yeah. can even put a bumper in there saying you know move to executive session yeah. and then you know yeah, they're they're well versed title card they're well versed right. in that. Okay. It looks like our next board the fourth Tuesday in April is the twenty seventh. Okay. You make a note of that. I put it, it's right here. But we are adjourned. So thanks for nice the time. Nice job, everybody. Thanks, guys.